Hi, I'm Don. Today, we paint another Warhammer commission. We are painting black armor or black suit and also we're painting non-metallic metal copper. I initially did genital priming to this model thinking that I want to use my Black Legion contrast paint. But eventually, I chickened out because I'm not used to painting black armor with contrast paint. So I had to paint the miniature black again. I was also thinking of painting the whole thing black again because I'm so used to painting non-metallic metal from black paint or black primer. But I kind of, I think I kind of pulled it off like I painted copper non-metallic metal over zenithal prime. I was actually very surprised that I kind of pulled off the non-metallic metal copper and turned this model into this. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Other than these very awesome brands, this channel won't be possible without the support of my awesome patrons. This video actually has a 30-minute version at Patreon. Now we paint the black armor. This recipe is actually stolen from Duke, my friend from Germany. I'll put the link to his YouTube channel below. Needless to say, Dark Sea Blue is one of those Vallejo paints that you must have. So if you see one, you see one at the stores or online, get like 5 bottles of this paint. <laughs> we are basically just layering, sketching, blocking where the highlight should be. This next color is Field Blue. It's super nice but you have to mix it with Dark Sea Blue or else your color will jump and you'll have island layering. I always say this in all my videos that key to good layering is basically mixing all your paints. You mix the previous color with the next color and you create smoother transitions. You all know I love glazing, fat glazes, and thin glazes with mediums. But even though I love glazing and I'm comfortable with glazing, do not rely on glazing to smoothen out your painting. A good layering will ensure that you don't do a ton of glazing so that you have a smooth finish. However, and this is a big however, I'm not into smooth transitions with this project. I'm going for a nice textured look. So you'll notice all throughout the video, I'm stippling and scratching and practically focus on creating nice textures. Now we paint our pre-highlight color, blue, gray, pale or something. It's, it's a pale blue-gray color and it's perfect as our pre-highlight color. Now we are almost done with the sketch part, the ugly stage of the layering of this model and we are moving on to the fat glazes. As usual, we're using cuttlefish colors for the fat and thin glazes. I get comments once in a while asking if the cuttlefish colors are better than Vallejo's. They're not. They're different. Cuttlefish colors are pre-glazed paints. So basically, they make my fat glazing and my glazing, my thin glazing, a bit more efficient. Well, not a bit more. Way more efficient than using Vallejo's. If you don't have cuttlefish colors, basically you could use whatever acrylic paints that you have and add more water or add more mediums. Creating a glaze paint or like a wash consistency paint if you're mixing water. But if you mix medium, it will be a glaze paint and it's easier to do glazes. 
you can see here I'm applying fat glazes. By fat glazes, I mean they're thicker than the usual wash consistency thin glazes, which are very transparent. I'm not into that since I'm not really into like very smooth finish. So I'm using fat glazes to paint the white paint and the black paint. Now we use charred remains. This is basically like a glazed version of dark sea blue, only it's bluer. So if you don't have this, just add more mediums to your dark sea blue. So I use this color to add a bit more blue again because I think I overdid the black glazes. Also, I'm tightening. I tightened like the highlights. I made it smaller to make the model look a bit more shiny. Now we are done with the black armor painting. Let's move on to the statue. I used Liquitex Ink Raw Umber here. It's transparent raw umber. And to be honest, it took me an hour to like really contemplate on how to paint the statue because I started with zenithal. Usually, I'll start with black paint and then I'll build up the brown like colors to paint copper non-metallic metal. So that's like my most, that's my comfort zone in terms of painting NMM copper or any non-metallic metal is basically to paint it from black paint and build up the colors. But after a couple of passes of the ink and making sure that the second pass will create more texture, I was able to pull off a nice base color. Now, after pulling off, kind of pulling off the base color of the statue, it's just adding more like not definition but a bit more interest to the statue. So now I'm painting rust effects around the areas around the iron bars or something. So I'm painting a reddish brown and orange brown and stippling it on the model to create nice textures, a rusty looking texture. You can see here in the painting of the statue that it's important not to rely too much on washes. I mean, I'm guilty of this especially when I used to do mecha. It's just painting the base color and then applying a loads of washes and voila, you have a weathered model. I'm not telling you how to paint your model. I'm not being a Karen here. But I'm just telling you and showing you that basic layering by a stippling and then eventually applying washes will create better results. Stippling washes or contrast paints will also work. Don't get me wrong, it will also work and it's fun to do. However, it's kind of slower, it's less efficient because they're more transparent. So stippling the actual colors, actual rust colors, and then doing like a quick wash or whatsoever, whatever you like, will produce better results. Now we're applying fat glazes. This is semi-equivalent to like stone gray and cavalry brown if you're using Vallejos and then thin it down around 1 is to 1 with medium and you could stipple it around highlights, the stone gray and the cavalry brown around the shade areas so that you produce nice texture again and you produce a less than rocky look to your statue. These colors made sure that our statue will look a bit more bronze and at the same time will give a bit more color depth. Color depth is always important. Adding more colors, painting more paints, no, painting more colors to your model will give more interest and of course color depth. Now we paint the patina effects or verdigris effects of the statue. The patina effects is arguably the most important part of painting non-metallic metal copper. It might be like the second most important part for me but it is very important. Because if you don't add patina effects to your copper painting, it has a tendency to look like very shiny leather or shiny wood. If if you don't want to like add patina effects to your copper armor, if it's like worn by a soldier or something, you just need to add more contrast. 
meaning you need to add more almost black shades and you need to paint brighter highlights. But personally, since I prefer orcs, ogres, or basically monsters, I usually use patina effects or apply patina effects to my copper NMM painting. If you do not have cuttlefish colors, you may simply use turquoise and then blue-green and then verdigris or blue-green mixed with a bit of ivory. So I found my patina a bit too green, it's too saturated, so I had to tone it down with this color. If you don't have this, just use blue-green and mix a bit of stone gray or deck tan to tone it down. And once you have this nice color, you do fat glazes with this one so that you tone down everything. By toning down everything and using this color to paint the edges and edge highlights basically of the model, you produce a more convincing patina effect. Now it's time to thank all my awesome patrons. I have bronze and silver patrons and here my gold tier level, my platinum tier level, my palladium tier patrons, and of course my Patreon partners. Do consider being a patron of one of the most active Patreon pages around. Now it's time for our golden lemon reveal. This project is a commission work and I just finished it in one day and I'm very happy with the result especially given the time that I spent on painting this Warhammer miniature. Again, a quick shout out for the Black Armor painting recipe. It was stolen from my friend Duke. I'll put the link to his channel below. The painting of the black armor is just basic sketch and glaze. I sketch and did layering of the colors from dark sea blue, field blue, and pale blue for the pre-highlight colors. And then we did glazes with like white and black glaze and a bit of glazes with dark blue to like refine the whole finish or look of the black armor. And then for the copper statue, I was really surprised we pulled it off with Liquitex ink. I think this video kinda showed you guys that it doesn't really matter how you paint the base colors. May it be inks, it may be zenithal, it may be build up of layers or basic layering. As long as you create texture and you're focused on like refining those layering, meaning you paint smaller and smaller areas to create that really nice volume and depth to your model. The most important thing for painting like display level-ish, which I call golden lemon painting, is to focus on what you want to achieve. With this one, we, we want lighting from the right side and we want a really nice copper NMM. And I think we achieved that. So the same client sent me a couple of 75mm resin miniatures. Now this one, I'm kinda afraid. Am I a good enough painter to pull these resin miniatures off? Anyways, um, do subscribe to the channel to see if I'm a good enough painter. Hope you like this video guys. That's it Pansit.